In this video, we will have a quick demo about Exegol. This is a containerized hacking tool which can be used by anyone who is into ethical hacking. Since it is running in containers, launch times is almost instant. There is also a desktop mode that you can access on your browser. Aside from the built-in tools, you can bring your own and use it. You can also connect this to VPNs, which is very useful in playing Capture the Flags. Let's try out this tool. Before pulling down the Exegol containers, we need to make sure we follow the requirements. I already did that on my Mac to save time. We need to run the Exegol install command that will pull the images and other required files. Just enter your local password and make sure you have access to the Docker socket to run containers. Enter Y for the ELA. I will choose No since I don't have an active subscription. We will just use the free version for this demo and let the creators know that you are not trying to rip them off. We need to download the initial resources. Not sure what are those. They provided a location which we can look at later. I'll enter Y to start the download. It now asks us for the image we want. As I mentioned, we will use the free image. It is almost 50 gig in size, so this might take time. So I will pause the video and come back again. The installation and pulling of images is done. We can now launch the container using this command, passing the name and image to use. We are running on Community Edition. We also have our workspace mounted inside the container. This is where we can drop our own files, such as exploit scripts and other tools. We are also running as root, meaning we are in full control inside the container. Looks like someone is trying to hack radio frequency signals. Since this is a Docker image, I guess this was also used for testing different tools. Let's see the command history on what else we can find. There is a Windows command to recover data from memory. We see here some database credentials and other commands showing various ethical hacking tools. Not sure why the creators didn't clean up the image before publishing. Anyway, let's not worry about that for now. Let's move on. Let's check some of the standard tools. How about some word lists? Rocky is here and it has several variants. One cool feature of Exegol is that you can easily log the activity inside the container. That means you can also use this as a honeypot server. To do that, we need to add the dash dash log parameter on the container startup command. Once someone logs in, every activity will be recorded into a file that is accessible inside our host machine. Let's simulate an attacker who is trying to perform basic enumeration. Then when we go back to our host machine, we can see the activity log inside the workspace. This is an Acinema file, which we can easily replay using this command. Once you captured the activity, you can save this file somewhere, then just destroy the container to remove any malware the attacker installed. Another feature of Exegol is the ability to use VPNs. Let's try to access this easy hack the box machine inside Exegol. I already downloaded the VPN configuration file inside my host machine. We can use that with the container using the dash dash VPN parameter on the startup command. Let's try to ping the target. Then let's start a simple scan. Let's use the default scripts, add version detection, and scan for all ports. We will specify min rate to speed up the scan. We don't need operating system detection here since we know the target is a Linux box. I'll pause the video and come back once the scan is finished. Scan is complete. Let's go to the top of the output. There is an FTP port open and an SSH port. The target also has a website running on top of a Python backend. These are pretty common ports you can see from a hack the box machine. Let's submit our answers to verify our scan output. Our target machine has a web server running, so we need a browser to better enumerate it. Exegol also has a feature to launch a desktop through your host machine. We do that by adding the dash dash desktop flag on the startup parameters. After that, we can now get the root password and the link to the desktop environment. Let's connect, then log in as root. Let's see what is inside. We have a sidebar here, some useful features like clipboard. Let's open the terminal and check whether we still have connection to our target machine. We can ping it, meaning our VPN configuration is still working. Now let's access the website. I feel there are a lot of distraction on the browser like sidebars. So I'm gonna close them so we have a clean focus on the target. This looks neat now. The target is an easy hack the box machine, so we don't expect any advanced attacks here. But let's try to work on some of the questions to have a feel on the Exegol desktop functionalities. Let's perform some basic enumeration. There is a user here. Let's click on messages. 
It just redirects us to a hash sign with nothing after it. That means this fragment identifier points to nothing, which is a dead end. Same thing happens if we try to click other options under the user drop-down menu. So let's move on. Let's explore other functionalities like this scan analysis. There is a download button. Let's go back to the terminal and open the PCAP file. Wireshark is installed as well, which is nice. I don't see anything useful in this capture file. It only shows us one TCP connection, nothing interesting on the TCP data. Let's go back to hack the box and see the question. It asks us for name of the path before the number, which is easy. Next is whether we can download capture files from other users. So let's go back to Exegol and look around. We can try several numbers here and see if it will allow us to download a PCAP file. But in real pen testing engagement, this will consume a lot of time, so we need to use a tool to automate it. Let's try to use Fuff. This is a web app directory enumeration tool that will send multiple requests to the target URL. We can see that this is also available in Exegol, which is what I expect since this is a common tool in ethical hacking. Like what we saw a while ago, there is also a history that the command was used in this Exegol image. We need to do modifications on this command. Instead of using the built-in word list, we need to generate our own that will contain a series of numbers. We can do that using a simple for loop and bash. We enclose the series of numbers inside curly braces. Then append the output to a file inside slash temp. After that, we pass the word list in fuff. And just let it run. Depending on the size of the word list, it may finish quickly or take longer. In our case, we are just using 100 items, so this should be quick. We see here three hits. So let's try to download those three PCAP files and open them. All of them are very similar. Each of them contains one TCP connection and there is no interesting data. Let's go back to hack the box and see the next question. Are we able to get other user scans? Yes, because we were able to manipulate the scan numbers, which probably represents the different users. The next question is asking us what PCAP file contains sensitive data, but we don't see anything on the three that we downloaded. We might be missing something. We have numbers from one to 100 in our word list and we only got three successful hits. In enumerating a series of numbers, we often forgot to include zero, which may signify root user. So let's try that now. Looks like it worked. We see more packets now, and the download button became available. Let's get that PCAP file and open again in Wireshark. This is probably the capture file that contains sensitive data since we see a lot of TCP connections. One quick way to look for sensitive strings is to search for frames containing some keywords. We see an FTP connection asking for a password. In order to see clearly the data, we can follow the TCP stream and open it in another window. Since this is an FTP, the plain text password is visible to the attacker. We can now go back to hack the box and complete our answer. Let's now stop working on this box since this is not the main focus of the video. But as you see, we can use Exigo Container just like any other full-blown machine for ethical hacking. If you enjoy this content, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Aside from the tools we tried a while ago, Exegol can also launch command and control frameworks inside the containers. Let's try launching a Havoc server. I will put this in the background and suppress all output. Before we connect, let's open the configuration profile. This contains the settings of the C2 and other things we need to connect to the server. The C2 server port will run on 40056. We see here the operator credentials and some Havoc agent settings. I'm not that familiar with Havoc, but it should be the same as any other C2s. Now let's start the Havoc client. As you see, it was able to launch the window inside my Mac. This is possible through the application called Xquartz, which is one of the requirements of Exegol. Let's name our session as Clown. Server is running on our local host. Port is the one from the configuration profile. And same with the operator credentials. The full window looks odd though. I don't see any method to adjust this. Anyway, let's see if this is functioning correctly. Let's type something on the chat. Let's check the listeners. We won't attack anything right now, but just check if the core functionalities of this C2 is working inside Exegol. Let's try to generate an HTTPS listener and add some dummy host. Let's put our custom headers, then save. There is no problem generating this listener, so no problem so far. Let's check the loots to see if there are any leftovers like what we saw from the command history. Nothing here meaning there is no previous data from this C2 server. Let's generate some payload. I'll go straight to generate and see if it will be successful. Is it finished? Let's click generate again. Same thing is happening. 
well, maybe it is done or there is an issue during payload generation. In any case, I think C2 servers like Havoc works fine inside Exegol containers. So this is another feature that will be really useful, especially for red teaming scenarios. There are a lot more features we can explore in Exegol. You can try it on your own and see if this hacking tool is suitable for you. Do note that they have more features available on the paid version. I hope you learned something in this video. I have other ethical hacking videos in my channel, so feel free to explore. See you on the next one.